over to Bloodborne. <laughs> How's it going, guys? So I, uh, I believe we had a name incentive. What did that get? Uh, what did that end up as? We got Pikachu. 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 <laughs> Perfect. All right. Whenever we're ready to go, just uh, let me know. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Three, two, one, go. Woo! There we go. Awesome. So for anyone who hasn't played uh, Bloodborne, uh, it's a game by From Software, the same guys that did Dark Souls, and it's pretty similar. Uh, there's some few differences. It's, uh, it's a bit faster, for sure. Um, and it's a lot more, uh, lot more aggressive, so you're going to see some, some cool fights here. Uh, right here, it's a lot of running at the start, but uh, we'll, get, we'll get pretty quick into the action, and uh, our first skip is about two minutes in, so... So you'll notice one thing that happens when you open doors in this game is stuff can't hit you. And uh, we're gonna use that a lot because there are a lot of enemies that guard doors. If you can get to the door as fast as possible, you can just um, avoid getting damaged by some enemies. So we're gonna do a glitch here first in the dream <clears throat> where we get two weapons. And we'll uh, kind of explain that. So the Hunter's Dream is kind of like the hub of Bloodborne. So you, uh, you do all your leveling, uh, you buy all your stuff here. And uh, we're gonna get our first weapon here and it's gonna be our weapon for the whole run, so. Perfect, all right, we got the, we got the two weapons there, so. Um, one was the saw cleaver, and that's the one we're going to use to do all of our damage here. And the threaded cane we're going to use later in the run just for a skip. Uh, so we'll see that. This is one of the most reset heavy parts of the run, so I'm hoping I, I don't die here. Uh, we'll see what happens, though. Nah, you got this. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, he's gonna come up to the skip, uh, we call it sewer skip. Um, it's actually a really difficult skip and it's like within the first couple of minutes of the run. So not necessarily a bad thing. So if you fail it, you can, uh, you know, get another run uh, going really fast, but it's one that you have to practice a lot to get really consistent with. So we'll see if you can uh, pull it off here. Yeah, this skip was made consistent by a giant cookie jar. Consistent, <laughs> quotation marks. <laughs> consistent. <laughs> Woo! Oh, nice, yeah, yeah. nice. First Very try. Nice. Good job. That saves about a minute. So we're coming up on our first boss here. Uh, once again, a really tough boss, like to start right off the bat of the speed run. His name's Father Gascoin, and uh, a really reset heavy boss. A lot of RNGs involved, so um, we'll see uh, how what kind of RNG we'll get in Hattie's favor here. I yeah, got some bless RNGs. So the general strategy, you want to run up on these steps here um, because Gascoigne likes to shoot a lot of bullets and um, being on these steps, uh, sometimes the steps will tank his bullets instead of hitting you, which will stagger you. And now you want to get a lot of backstabs and uh, you want to throw these Molotovs because when he's uh, staggered like that, he'll take extra damage. You can see his health's already halfway down. Sweet blood. So let's backstab Molly. He should transform here pretty soon. Yep. And, and the cool thing there is you'll actually throw a Molotov, and during his transformation, you'll get double damage. Great job, dude. That was a really good gas <laughs> one. <fight. That> <laughs> he incredible. made that look that easy, but <laughs> gas going can be a really hard fight. What did you say? About 80% of your resets were to that boss? Uh, yeah, that yeah. boss. <laughs> 80%. <laughs> I promise you he's harder than what he looks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so um, 
basically now it's a lot of running, so any donations would be perfect right now until we get to the next boss slash skip. All right, I have an anonymous $213 donation. Woo! Wow. Which, for those of you who don't know, is actually the Los Angeles area code. <laughs> Fun fact. <laughs> I also have an anonymous $50 donation uh, with no comment. So, for those of you who may remember from yesterday, this is my time to talk about our upcoming incentives again, which is our Bloodborne Glitch exhibition happening right after this if we manage to raise about $1,900 more, dollars, as well as our bonus game, Sekiro Any Percent, which still has about $4,500 left to go. Yeah, this is a huge reset point right here with these dogs. They can... Uh, oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Don't talk about it and it won't happen. It's not <laughs> over yet, guys. He, he got away for now, but yeah. there's still more. I should have said, this is super consistent right here. We gotta just run through this door. Ignore right. the dogs. Right now we're headed to a boss called uh, Bloodstar Beast. Take we tried to bribe pup time, but it didn't work out. <laughs> That's nice. all right. Good, good dogs. Cute dog. <laughs> you might have noticed that Hattie picked up an item there by talking to that uh, that guy. So what he just picked up there was some fire papers, which is it'll just buff his weapon, give him extra damage, and that's really essential for the next few bosses that we'll we'll see. We're now going pretty low into Yarnum to a new area called Old Yarnum, actually. So, um, uh, pretty tough area, if, you know, if you're casually playing through the game. But um, yeah. we'll be doing a nice little skip here. So, <laughs> yeah, hopefully, I don't die. Coming up on a skip that's been renamed a bunch of times. <laughs> I think right now it's called New Old Yarnum Skip. Yeah, it's not. It's pretty confusing, to be honest. <laughs> Bloodborne runners don't aren't very creative in their skip naming. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, oh. Well, at least I didn't die, so I can go back up and try again. I missed it. But yeah, yeah, so the goal is to land on that pillar there, and then he can roll over and uh, run on this invisible path. You'll see, but uh, we'll have to just uh, retry it here. Not, not a big deal. I don't know why I didn't quit out. That would have been faster. I had it open and everything. Another thing you'll probably see in Bloodborne is a lot of ladders. So be yeah. prepared for that. <laughs> that looks good. Nice. There Excellent. Go. All right. Yeah, great job, dude. Oh, no. That's not good. <laughs> <laughs> the skip looked good. That didn't look good. These wolves can be a little scary, but I'm gonna. I don't like going around that corner if I don't see this guy here because yeah. he can. The wolves leave. are pretty scary, man. <laughs> it, it can take them a minute to react to you, but sometimes they'll just swipe at you. All right, the item he just picked up, or, or what we call beast blood pellets, um, it's another consumable that uh, you'll see him eat like right before a boss fight. And uh, basically, uh, what the pellets do is. Um, you can increase your um, attack damage by around 70% if you can max out the meter. And, uh, but you also take about 80% more once the meter is full. So you really want to know how to fight enemies and bosses if you're going to decide to use them. But they're really essential for uh, speed runs. I mean, besides uh, gas point and one other boss, I believe we use it on every single one. So you see him pop yeah, the pellet here. Yeah, so he just used a fire paper and a beast blood pellet. And then he threw a blood cocktail in the corner that's going to keep the beast distracted while he just wails on it from behind. You can see the meter at the top of the screen there is slowly filling up. The more you do, like, uh, charged R2s, or you can even do uh, transform attacks, R1, L1, it'll build up the meter, which gives him more damage output. And just like that, BSB is melted. <laughs> BSB, good job, dude. So far, so good. Yeah. This is the definitely the worst part of the run. The first 20 minutes, once I get past there, I'll be uh, smooth sailing. So, uh, we'll see. Yeah, the early game can be really reset heavy. All 
All right, so we went to all the way down to our old yard. Now we're going all the way up, <laughs> taking the elevator up this yeah. time. This path only opens up after you kill Blood Starved Beast. The funny thing is, you're gonna go right back down. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, there's a lot of going way up and way down in this game. So right now we're going to the uh, the abandoned uh, Hunter's Dream, and he's going to pick up a few items here. He's going to get what we call uh, one-third of an umbilical cord. Um, you need three of those total in order to fight the uh, final boss at the end of the game. So this is the first one that we get. He's also going to pick up this um, these doll set clothes inside of this uh, chest here, which he can uh, sell later for a lot of uh, echoes. So if you play Dark Souls, that would be like your souls, basically. So he can use that to level up and get uh, more levels for his uh, character. Yeah, it ends up being like 35,000, I believe. Yeah, it's and really it's early a game. That's a lot of levels, which really help you pump your damage early. So far, we haven't even, we've gone to the dream once to get our weapons. We haven't bothered to upgrade our, our weapon or level our character. So we're still at a plus zero. So, um, and uh, we're heading actually to the next boss uh, right now, which would be Viker Amelia. Yeah, casually playing through this, you'd probably have your weapon at plus three by now, and you'd have a few levels into your character, but it's not viable for the speed run. This is a little glitch called the ladder warp. So you may be wondering what he did there, and uh, it looks kind of confusing, but it'll all be explained after uh, he takes care of the boss. Yeah. These guys look really scary, but they don't really do much. You just kind of run right by them. Yeah, if they like happen said, to hit you, they can hurt, but they move yeah. really slow. <laughs> like I said, when you're opening doors, you get iframes. So these guys, <laughs> he's, he's wailing away, but nothing's yeah. happening. Viker Amelia is what we call a, a limb boss, where you can actually break all of her limbs. And the strat here is where we're going to break every single limb that she has and keep her uh, permanently staggered throughout the whole fight. So she doesn't really get a chance to fight back. So. Yeah, this is a very consistent boss fight because of that. Don't jinx it. <laughs> <laughs> You see him doing like transform attacks, he's doing like R1, L1, L1, and once again, that's to build up the beast meter that he, uh, after consuming the beast blood pellet to increase the damage. It's pretty amazing if you think about it. Like I said, he has a plus zero weapon, but he's still able to keep Amelia stun locked for the duration of the, the fight and deal major damage. The Beast Blood Pellets are really, really nice. And again, this is a boss that fighting her casually can be really frustrating and hard. Look but at that. The speedrun strat just works so well. <laughs> nice job, man. Great job. <laughs> And uh, this is the part of the run where we start removing our clothes. Uh, but it's actually, there's a point to it. So <laughs> it's not just for fun. So he grabbed a limp and, qu and quit out here. And uh, you'll see why he quit out um, once he reloads. So this is like a continuation of the thing with the ladder earlier. Yeah. And more or less what he does is you cancel the climbing animation with another animation. And it can be any animation of uh, a healing item, changing your, taking your weapon, putting it away, transforming it. And more or less it just stores your position on the ladder. And then when you quit out, the game, that whole entire time he's fighting that boss, the game thinks he's on the ladder. Yep. Yeah, and so he, now you don't have to run down the stairs again. Doesn't save any real time, so I mean, I just did it because it looks cool. <laughs> it's cool, cool little glitch. That Unfortunately, brain sucker really there can really give you trouble sometimes. The bad thing is you really don't see that ladder warp only but that one time in uh, all bosses or even any percent. Yeah, unfortunately, there's not really a lot of other places we could use it. Like, you can do it anywhere if you find a ladder, but it wouldn't really be beneficial to any part in the run to save any time. Yeah, so. they might use it in the all achievements run. Yeah, it's used a lot in all achievements. It's pretty, uh, pretty cool. All achievements is a really fun run. Yeah, it is. So after you defeat Amelia, you can now go through this door, which leads to the Forbidden Woods. I would say most people who've played this game would say this is their most hated area. Yeah. <laughs> and one of their most hated bosses. Oh, yeah. It's really bad. It's uh, like a labyrinth type of woods, and there's full of snakes. So if you don't like snakes, this might not be a good area for you. 
Luckily, we've got a few skips here that allows a Hattie to get through a large portion of the Forbidden Woods without having to actually run through all of it. So we're going back to the Hunter's Dream now for the first time besides getting our weapons, and Hattie's going to uh, sell the doll clothes here and uh, buy some other items as well that he, he'll need. And then we're going to uh, upgrade our... Well, first we're going to upgrade our weapon. Uh, he's picked up some items. Oh, he's going to buy 16 shards here, actually, uh, using uh, the insight. He's ever, when you kill bosses and uh, get through new areas, you got, gather insight. So you can uh, buy items with your insight. He just decides to buy upgrade material for his weapon. Yeah, insight is essentially just another form of currency. Oh, my gosh. And he just murdered the dog. Yeah. <laughs> How could he? There's a reason, guys. Don't. The game is booming. <laughs> it's... Uh, it's for speed, man. It's for speed. Yeah, the doll has a lot of dialogue. Give me a so, break. Yeah, uh, what we do is we have to kill her, and we can instantly level up without going through the dialogue to save some time. So. <laughs> Exclamation point! Why it's faster? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you'll see like all the time. People are like, "Why'd you kill the doll, man?" And we're like, it's faster. Man. <laughs> dude. So before we go back to the Forbidden Woods, we're going to actually. Uh, that what? <laughs> How? Where did that guy come from? <laughs> Out of nowhere, in the corner, like, every single time. He always kills my runs, that guy right there. He gets killed there in order to go to an area <laughs> earlier than he normally would be able to. It is a Way scripted death. So it's really weird. These, those guys are like uh, called back snatchers. And so it's a scripted death in the run where uh, you'll die to that guy and uh, he'll take you to this jail cell. But uh, we come here in order to fight actually another boss. Um, We're going to fight another limb boss right now. Yep, uh, Dark Beast Parl. He's actually one of my favorite bosses in terms of his appearance. Like he's He looks so really cool, cool. dude. Um, but once again, just like he did with Amelia, he's going to be able to just perma stagger lock. Um, and again, he's really frustrating to fight casually yeah. if you don't stagger him, because locking onto him is really <laughs> annoying. The camera beast, man. It yeah. like, ruins your camera, <laughs> destroys it. Because he walks over you, and the camera locks onto individual legs instead of his head. Yeah, just like... Etc. Uh, if you fight Paro, like, super early, or if you don't know the strats that Hattie's doing, he's a really tough boss. But once yeah. again, we have enough... Damage output now from the Beast Blood Pillars and an upgraded weapon. He's we gonna lie play. down in just the same position for the whole fight, pretty much. Yeah, hard boss, right? Yeah. <laughs> Good job. So back in the day, they actually used to do that boss later on in the run. Yeah. But uh, you had to do a somewhat difficult skip twice. Terrible and, skip. And yeah, and so now, Using uh, you know the limb mechanics and limb soreness in particular, uh, you actually can do more damage to broken limbs, and thus we are actually and we've even removed fire paper from that fight to be mm -hmm. able to use later in the DLC. Right. And uh, yeah, early parl quote unquote is now just normal. <laughs> yeah, that's the way it's done now, and that makes you not have to do an annoying skip later in the game two times in a row. And also, after killing Paro, you now have access to Bolt Paper, which uh, he just bought, which uh, will help on the next few bosses as far as uh, damage output. Yeah. While we're running through the woods, why don't you guys uh, introduce yourselves? I completely forgot about that. If you guys want to do that. Uh, I'm Curious Peanut. I'm also a Bloodborne runner. Uh, not as good as a Hattie, though. <laughs> <laughs> Lies. Uh, I am KWitty23. Uh, I also... Um, Really having the Souls community used to speed run this game uh, quite a bit, so it's really cool to see, uh, you know, to be here on the couch to uh, represent and support Addy for his speed runs. I'm Applebee Patios, and I beat this game one time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> I'm pretty much an expert, okay? And also donations if you have any. Yeah. I got donations. Awesome. I've got $25 from Ali Coco. Yeah. Hey, Ali. <laughs> Go a Hattie. Shout out to Curious Peanut, K Dub, and Apple on the Couch. Thank you so much, Ali. Thanks, Ali. I also have $10 from the one and only Father Gascoin. Oh, man. <laughs> he's mad, isn't he? Oh, he's mad. <laughs> 
oh sure, whenever I win, it's bad RNG, and I'm just lucky. <laughs> Haters. Oh, oh Papa man. G. I'm also, sorry, man. Also, on ring donations, I do want to check in again. We have raised quite a bit for that Bloodborne Glitch exhibition. We are now about $1,500 short on that. So, a little ways to go yet, but I know y'all can do it. We got this, guys. Yeah, that'll be pretty cool. I uh, set up a bunch of cool glitches to show off. Uh, some funny ones, some useful ones, some not-so-useful ones. Yeah, there's some really neat glitches in this game that give you absolutely no benefit whatsoever. <laughs> All right, we're actually running now to, I would say, one of the hardest bosses in the entire yeah, run. This one of the most the hated bosses, too, by a lot of people. There are three of them, and that should just tell you why it's already pretty difficult, right? And they can give you a lot of different looks and attacks, and sometimes there's just nothing you can do here, so we'll let it have you focus in and uh, see if you can take them out. doesn't like it. You want to kill this one with the mace first. So you have one with the mace and shoots three fireballs. And you have two with swords and another one, one with the swords and he has a flamethrower. <laughs> now they're into phase two, which means that they're going to have different attacks uh, with longer range. But we've only got one shadow left, so he can uh, keep him kind of locked in a little dance. As long as he doesn't go dead. around the grave forever. Man, that was a pretty clean fight, dude. <laughs> yeah, that was good. <laughs> All right. Uh, breathe a sigh of relief. Yeah, now. that's <laughs> usually the scariest boss. You so. die there, it's like three minutes gone, but now it's uh, we're some right lamps up, to grab. We're right up to another boss almost. Yeah, right. there's really no break between the shadows and the next boss. This area is really small called Birkenworth, and uh, it takes you directly to the next boss that we fight. It's just Rom the Vacuous Spider. Luckily, we've got Bold Paper, which this boss is very weak to. And I've actually never missed this skip, so <laughs> there's a first time for everything. <laughs> We'll see. 100% consistent skip right here. Nice. Oh, oh, yeah. Jack Mark's cross skip. Nice. That was really good. In case cool. you guys didn't know, he was lying about what he said. Yeah. <laughs> that's, one, that's by far, in my opinion, the hardest skip in the run, for sure. Um, to get consistently, at least. Yeah. All right, so he's going to shoot Rom here to uh, start the fight. Pop a pellet. As soon as Rom takes even one tick of damage, these spiders fall down from the sky. It's really difficult to fight Rom with all of them still alive. <laughs> Good. Okay. Uh, when they do some of their attacks, they can just one-shot you right away. It's actually fine, guys. Nothing's happening. <laughs> no problem. So what he's doing now is he's killing a little spiders and uh, also building up his beast meter a bit while he's doing that. Um, yeah, you can see the beast meter on the top of the screen yeah, there's there. There's a pretty nice strat that he'll use on Rom here. When he does his transform attacks, it builds up the beast meter a lot more than just a normal attack. So then uh, yeah, he'll hit, hit Rom a few more times here. She'll try to teleport. He'll do a charge dart two here to stagger her. He'll be able to get a little bit more damage out of her. Sometimes she can uh, back up a lot, and sometimes you can kill her right there. But she didn't backstep, so he, she's going to teleport. But he can uh, he knows where she'll respawn. And he, he skipped phase two and sent her right into phase three, basically. And, and then he killed her right. before she could actually attack. <laughs> Again. Great job. Pretty awesome. It looks like you've done this before. Never. <laughs> Maybe no, no, twice. Now we're heading to an area called Yahargul, which is where that skip is that we mentioned earlier that you had to do twice in a row in the old version of the run. Now you only have to do it once, luckily. So the big, like, shadows... Rom and the upcoming boss are really like a big crucial part of the run in that if you if anything goes wrong in that, you, you need the souls or echoes you get in this portion that it's pretty tight yeah. for to get you set up for the rest of the run. And so having you know losing them or having deaths is it's kinda of catastrophic to the run to be honest. So it's always a big clinch part of the run. Right now he's heading to pick up a key that he's gonna need later in the game. Yeah, sorry, don't uh, start holding your breath again because this next boss can end the run. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, this next boss can be pretty reset heavy as yeah. well. Another boss is, has a lot of RNG to him. He's kind of weird. Like, he can go really smooth or it, it can just be a total train wreck. Yeah, it, it, even if you're the best Bloodborne player in the world, which a Hattie almost is. I doubt it. It can still uh, look pretty messy. So yeah, he grabbed a key there, like uh, Apple said, that uh, we'll use later um, in the run, but he has to grab it now because we, we won't be back here. And now we're going to do um, another skip. Uh, personally, I am not a fan of this skip. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is the annoying skip we mentioned. It's called the Yahargo skip. I mean, creative, if you like dying game. and uh, in <laughs> it, random, unpredictable ways, this skip is definitely for you. Yeah. Or if you like getting it first try nice. every time. <laughs> we got a first try. He clips through the fence there. It's a weird little fence. You can actually walk through it if you do it at the right angle, but it's, it's not very consistent. Yeah, that skip is really weird. Sometimes you can do everything right, like as far as your setup, and, but what'll happen is like, you'll when get, you go through the fence, you'll just clip through the ground and die. Yeah, so. and sometimes it'll give you kind of a super jump forward and you'll just fall yeah. down with the ledge behind you. This next area is also really, really scary. There's going to be these, uh, I don't know what they are. They're nasty, though. But uh, <laughs> they, uh, <laughs> these things in boxes, and they just fit these, like, blood spikes at you. Yeah. And so what I had is going to, he's going to pick up this gem here first, um, which he'll be able to put in his weapon to increase his damage later. Um, but you'll see he's going to start running at uh, specific angles here because the, the spikes that they shoot, they, they snipe you. So you see him kind of going sideways here. Like, yeah, you want to zigzag a little yeah. bit in this area because if you get hit by one of those spikes, it can one-shot you. Yeah. I have a little bit of extra vitality right now, which is kind of like a safe threat. Mm -hmm. but, uh, I think mm -hmm. they'd probably still one-shot me if I was running. Yeah. Yeah, you take more damage if you're running in this game, right. like in a lot of games. Now we're headed to the One Reborn, and once again, another limb boss. <laughs> yeah, you can see this boss is just messy looking to begin with. So and you've got maidens shooting fireballs at you from above. Uh, what makes this boss um, pretty scary is like what Apple said. You have the maiden shooting the fireballs up top, but this guy also does what you call a corpse drop. He he drops like parts of his body off onto you, and it does a lot of damage. And sometimes you can get stun locked by it or hit by fireballs and then corpse drop, which is an instant death. But if you can keep him stun locked, the fight goes pretty well here. Yeah, you can do from you can go from doing okay to being immediately dead nice. very quickly in that fight. Good job. <laughs> <The> fireball, <right? laughs> Insult to injury. He uh, he doesn't want me to continue, uh, but I didn't let him. I didn't let him stop me. Now That's we're heading very to nice. a really cool area in the game. We got time for a quick donation. Yes, sir. I have two hundred and fifty dollars oh, from El wow. Graymark. And of course, El Graymark had to donate for that Sekiro run. Um, and checking in again on our incentives, we have just a touch over a thousand dollars to go for that glitch exhibition. Um, and Ahadi, you said you put in quite a bit of hard work for that. I'm oh, sure you yeah. don't want that to go to waste. Definitely hard work. <laughs> Not last night. <laughs> <laughs> last minute. <laughs> Last minute. Yeah, don't, don't let the Ola work go to waste. Um, and we also still have about um, $4,400 to go on the bonus game Sekiro Any Percent. Um, that game would be run by Little Aggie, so get your donations in. And yeah. again, you know, that makes GDQX go a little bit longer. And of course, I get to read donations for longer too. And I love reading all your donations, they're great. Killing one of these wandering nightmares for upgrade materials. They get more vitality the further you go in the game. So we really only make like three dream visits during the run, and this is the second one, so the second level up, and you'll get uh, about, I believe it's 32 strength and 25 skill, and you can go plus eight for your weapon and slots of gems you get. So you really get a big power increase at this point. I'm, I'm sorry, guys. Another it's, doll it's, murder. It's, it's for bad. speed. Oh. It's, it's for the sake of speed, man. Is it worth it, though? Yes. It's, it's worth the speed. It is worth it. So, yeah, he got through all those past areas with a very underleveled weapon, and now he finally got to boost it up a little bit which he's really going to need for this next boss. Oh, yeah. He's, this guy's got so much health. <laughs> he's pretty tanky, yeah. 
the whole fight takes like close to I don't know two and a half minutes. Probably the longest in the yeah. game. He's a very bizarre boss. Let's just leave it at that. This is <laughs> the first fully human boss in the game. Father Gascoigne starts off as human and then he turns into a beast in his next phase. That guy can just jump on you for no reason, so thank mm -hmm. God he didn't do that. Um, but yeah, he can still he can still block me at the door here, actually. Um, yeah, that can happen. If I get unlucky. And you can't quit out on doors in Bloodborne. I might have to make an exception to that rule. I don't know. Yeah, what you guys think? if you quit out on a door in Bloodborne, oh boy. you can't submit it. To it. <laughs> oh wow! <laughs> I can't submit this world record pace speed run if I quit out on the door. We're like, entering the room of spiders now. If you're arachnophobic, yeah, please turn sorry, around. <laughs> I forgot to tell you to turn around, so you're if, already. <laughs> if your character turns around right now, there's about 30 spiders chasing after yeah. you. Luckily, we just run by him in this. I'm not sure why this guy's here, but he's there. I believe his name is uh, Edgar, Edgar Wire Intelligence. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't even give you anything good when you kill him. It's unfortunate. All the hunters in this game are really, really difficult to kill. Yeah. They're like, they're like PvP, but ten times worse. It's like AI PvP. Yeah, the the other hunters that you fight in this game are way harder than the other characters you fight in like a Dark Souls game. I'm on autopilot mode right now, so I would explain yeah, you're stuff. You're good. Man. <laughs> this, this part of the run is pretty consistent, getting to Miko. This is his boss room we're about to enter now. Oh, yeah. I almost forgot to potentially not lose five minutes. That, yeah. That's usually the best, best thing to do. Five seconds, five minutes. I don't know. <laughs> Uh, another little trick here that you guys might not notice, if you look at Hattie's weapon, he has it extended out, and when he starts uh, the boss fight, you'll see him uh, extend it back in. You see that? So what that does is, when a cutscene happens, um, it slows down your momentum and your speed, but uh, we found out that if you untrick and trick your weapon as a boss fight starts, you keep your momentum. So it just saves you, throughout the whole run, if you do that for each boss, that can, you know, it saves you a couple seconds for a boss fight, but that really adds up. So. This is a pretty cool new strat here. Oh, the gunshots. Yeah. yeah. If you shoot him with a gun three times, he won't go into this room that you usually have to chase him into. He'll just come walking back towards you. Yeah, so this is Mikolash, host of the Nightmares. Uh, he's a really interesting boss. As you can see, he has a cage on his head, so... Yeah. He's a pretty cool guy. He uses um, the magic system that's in this game, which is called Hunter Tools. He has a lot of ads in this fight. Like, as you can see, Hattie had to take out a couple skeletons there because they hit really hard, and they can... Uh, they can swarm oh, yeah. you a little bit. And they also, uh, they play dead, so that one did, but I'm, I'm smarter than that, I know. Getting some more upgrade weapon, upgrade tools here. So if you take about half his health, uh, Mikolash will disappear, and he'll go to the higher section of this area here. So we have to chase him down, and... Uh, Usually in your first playthrough, it's kind of confusing. There's a uh, meticulous order that you have to uh, chase him to that you can force him into certain uh, corners. But if you don't know that, you're just running around for, yeah. like, minutes. A lot of people just run around <laughs> so in a big circle. So many people complaining yeah. about Guilty. <laughs> 45 minutes. Running around. I can't kill this boss. I've been running around for an hour, and I can't figure out how to get him. There's a strat. You can't use it in a speed run, of course, because it's very slow. But you can stand up there and snipe Miko from the ledge. So normally, Mikolaj, uh, once you drop down, he'll run into this cage here, but Hattie actually blocked him so you can fight him in the hallway, which saves a lot of time. Great fight. Nice job. And see, we actually even use that transform on it's any cutscene that you walk into. You can use that tricking for, to keep your momentum, and it, yeah. it, it's really nice. Yeah, that adds up yeah. over the course of the run. The next boss is the last boss of the inner percent run of this game. But we gotta make a quick detour first. Yeah, so any donations would be perfect right now. Lots yeah. of running. All right, we have $15 from Delirium. Go, 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 glitch exhibition. We have only $400 to go before we get that glitch exhibition. Nice. So we are super close. Awesome. 
Okay, this guy's like hyper chasing me right now. Like this this effect you see over the the character is called frenzy. If it reaches the full thing, which it just did, it takes off a huge portion of his health. I got pretty lucky there. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. And that area right there, I had he just picked up another gem for his weapon. Um, that area right there, it, that's kind of RNG heavy too. The uh, position of those brain suckers are, uh, they can be uh, yeah, in the, different spots. Yeah, they can grab you. They have a yeah. grab move, which is really frustrating. And it kind of tells you how big, that was like, you know, quite a big detour in it, but that shows you how important gems are for our damage in yeah. the run, and that that's an, another 18% gem, which we picked one up earlier and uh, before one reborn. That's going to let him get a lot more damage. And we we'll get one more right just coming up now, and it's, gems are crucial for the speed run. And you'll see a lot of times casual playthroughs, people ask, why are my damage so bad? Because you probably don't have to get gems. He just used an item called the Blue Elixir. It makes the enemies in the game notice you a few seconds later than they normally would, which is really useful because these pigs can charge you very fast. So he's passed them before they realize he's there. And I did a setup there that didn't work, it seems. Uh, <laughs> Trying to get, get the extra echoes. Yeah, to get the pigs to dive bomb the shadows there. Yeah, sometimes you can get the pigs to attack those extra shadows and you'll get a, a few extra echoes from that. I don't know if I'll get an extra level from that, to be honest, because I got 12 vitality and normally I only get 10, so, I mean, we'll, I guess we'll find out. <clears throat> All right, here we have the final boss of the 80% run, which is Margot's wet nurse. She looks really intimidating, but for the most part, what you want to do is just kind of stay behind her and uh, you'll see how he just build up his meter here and, uh, she goes down pretty quick. There is a little bit of RNG into this fight. She can go into what we call the nightmare phase, where she can uh, spawn another shadow of herself, where they just viciously attack you. But and she can teleport just like that, which yeah. will lose, make you lose a few seconds here. But but pretty much all of her attacks are just front-facing attacks. So she's one of the easiest bosses in the game. She has just has a lot of health. I just love the sound of when you hit her. I yeah, it's that. very satisfying. <laughs> she's really tanky. <laughs> so she's giving him two teleports to this uh, fight, which is not what you want, but it's good enough. No nightmare yeah. phase, though. No that's nightmare great. phase, so that's the very good nice. thing. Great job. And now we wait <laughs> for yeah. lore. We, I don't know anything about lore. We wait for the baby to stop crying. Speedrunners don't know lore, they just know how to go fast. And then it finally says, Prey Slaughtered or something. Nightmare Slain. Nightmare Slain. Nightmare slain. Uh, Wet Nurse actually also drops another umbilical cord that he picked up. He picked up one earlier and then he picked up another one from her. He'll need to get one more in order to fight the uh, final boss of the game. <coughs> Excuse me. Fun fact, there's actually four of them in the game, so yeah. I don't know who... You know, a math degree. <laughs> they don't know how to do math <laughs> <laughs> from software. <laughs> the fourth one requires you to go talk to an NPC several times throughout the game, though, so it's not really viable to get in the speed run. You might have noticed now that the Hunter Dream is on fire. Whenever you kill a nurse, it's just flaming, bro. I actually <laughs> didn't notice, to be honest. Can I make a quick announcement? Yes, sir. We have met the Bloodborne yeah. Glitch Exhibition right. Incentive. Awesome. Exciting. That is very exciting. What would also be exciting is the bonus game secure any percent. We are about three thousand seven hundred dollars away from meeting that, and I still believe in all of you. Nice third try, nice, nice. job. <laughs> That's a skip that can uh, be very annoying because sometimes really it really hard. feels like RNG. Yeah, this is like, this area is called the lecture hall. We call it the lecture hall skip. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> ridiculously precise to the point where sometimes it feels like you're doing the same thing, but... It, it almost feels frame perfect. Yeah. It's not quite... Good railing RNG. Just, yeah, good railing RNG. <laughs> you can see the railing shaking around there, man. I mean, like... <clears throat> you gotta get the good cycle. Now we're entering an area called the Nightmare Frontier. We're gonna face a boss called Amygdala. Pretty we're much this is about the mo most you're going to see of it, because we're about to skip most. Yeah, we're skipping no. almost the entire no, area. Skip. <laughs> this is a very cool skip. This, this is an elevator that you get when you get all the way to the end of the level. You can finally open this shortcut up, and there's a way to just skip all of that. Was this my first quit out other than uh, Ladder Warp? I think so. Yup. I think so. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I haven't quit out at all. 
Yeah, normally if you like jump down that elevator shaft, you'll die. But there's actually a small little rock that pokes out, and if you hit that right before you quit out, it makes it very easy, just so. like a normal non-lethal fall. Yeah, Amygdala is right ahead. It's a eldritch-looking monster. Got time for a donation? Yes, sir. So the meaning that glitch exhibition was definitely helped by this one thousand dollar donation Ooh, from awesome. Lobos Junior Eight. Wow. This is my first GDQ event visiting in person. I need all the Souls runs I can get. Nice. Half towards Bloodborne glitches, half towards Sekiro. Nice. I agree with that sentiment. Very nice. Did you just get the dupe? No. You're seeing things. Okay. As you can see, Amygdala is a very quick fight in the speed run. He finished it before, basically as soon as he started. I did it. get the dupe, by the way. I was just kidding. Oh. <laughs> now the doll only takes one kill, one hit to kill. Yeah, we're pretty leveled up at this point. We have like a, a plus nine weapon, correct? At this uh, point. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So damage output. This is when the, you'll just see us do like crazy damage, like, on top of stacking the Beast Blood Pellet in a paper. So most bosses now would just kind of just melt. There's one more level he can get on his weapon. He's not going to get it till he goes to the DLC, though. This is one of my favorite skips. It's pretty cool. This is a really, really nice skip because it just, it's just really convenient. There's a trend with this game. The hardest skips uh, save the least amount of time. <laughs> so, like, this one only saves, like, 12 seconds, and the... Um, the one I did at the start of Forbidden Woods that I probably didn't mention because it's so easy uh, it saves like 40 seconds. That's right. We didn't even mention that skip. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's more Man, I didn't even use. notice it. Everyone, everyone's <laughs> like, this guy's running on, <laughs> running on air. That's like the easiest skip in the game to do, that earlier one. Okay. Perfect. And this one is a little tougher, but... A little more precise. It, it's, it's consistent, though. I think I got it. Nice. Yeah. yeah. Very nice. So he ends up in this poison pool. Good job. I always liked how this one was called Cave Skip, but you really don't skip the cave. You just jump right into yeah. it. Coming up on the best part of the I game mean, right now, which is the ladders. Yeah, for sure. Super riveting. Yeah, this is, this is where From Software really shines, is in their ladders. I named Cave Skip, so you can blame me for the, <laughs> the lack of innovation. Extremely in creative name. Yeah. Like Good. Mario Good. games, man. They have like cool skip names and stuff. We just have like exactly what it is. Cave skip. <laughs> You're skipping a cave. <clears throat> now, if you notice, we did come back to this area. So this is where we fought the Shadows of Yarnum. But we have to come back here because uh, we need two key items here. We're going to uh, get what we call the uh, Kaner Summons. It's, uh, it's going to allow us to get into another area later in the game. And also, we're going to... Um, Kill another lady, unfortunately, and uh, she's going to drop the final umbilical cord for us. She actually tries to kill you if you come here. If you come here earlier, yeah. If you come well. here too early, if you come here now, then she can't fight you and she dies in one hit. Yeah, but I don't feel you, too bad. Honestly. If you find your way here earlier in the game, she can actually be really hard to kill. Yeah, she's actually pretty evil, so this one's yeah. justified. Okay? She, she tries <laughs> to turn you into an alien. Man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> she's crazy. Yeah, and if you actually listen to her dialogue when you're playing through the game, she's got some crazy ramblings going yeah, on. Yeah, she's uh, not all there. Oh, the, the blue person in this room was one of her victims. Yeah. <laughs> We're actually going to fight a boss later on in the run. That's just a bunch of them. So that yeah. that's shows you from software's uh, incredible innovation <laughs> when it comes to boss fights. A lot of them are great. Some of them... Eh, Oh, man, they're, uh... We'll take a regular enemy <laughs> and we'll just make it super big. Take a regular enemy and make ten of them. That's... You mean you don't like fighting jelly beans? No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so there she is on the table. You kill her in one hit, you can punch her and she'll still die in one hit. Yeah, or you can do a 360 no-scope, which is what Endurtiz <laughs> likes to do. <laughs> I've never successfully done it. I've tried it several times, but <laughs> it's impossible. It's harder than, like, some of the bosses. Mm-hmm. All right, so he got the final umbilical cord of the game, and uh, you actually have to um, pop these cords. So it's not enough to just collect them. You have to, uh, like, pop them in your inventory, and 
you may not notice, but he usually does it like in specific spots. Like he might be going up an elevator, he'll pop it just because it, you know, it takes time to pop it. But if you're going up elevators and stuff like that, or um, you know, it doesn't, uh, he doesn't lose any time in the process. So. I have an anonymous $500 oh, donation. Awesome. Nice. And based on what I can see in the tracker here, it looks like that $500 went towards the bonus game Sekiro. Yeah. And that puts us less than $3,000 away from meeting that incentive. Uh, we are coming. so close. We're going to get it. Coming. We're going to get it. We're heading now to an area called the Upper Cathedral Ward. There are two bosses up here that he's going to fight. And you're going to see why he picked up the threaded cane at the very beginning of the game. Uh, this is also where, when we first got to Yargul, he picked up the key. Uh, you need the key to get to this area, yeah. so. I don't have to quit out there, but I mean, it's uh, oftentimes you'll get shot and fall off the edge. Yeah, there's some guys waiting right around the corner there for you, and they can... This is you. the only safety quit out, I think, that I do in this run, so every other, every other quit out is intentional and to save time. That almost hit. Those guys in the wheelchairs uh, die very easily, but if they do manage to hit you, it hits really hard. That guy's so loud, man. They're very <laughs> amused like, by the sight of a Hattie. Killed my there. eardrums. There's a little consistent setup here uh, that you can do where you run against this fence and then you can go right between these guys. So I don't know why it works, but Silico, you know, he's, he's all right. He, he's made some pretty cool strats. Yeah, he has. In Silico. Underscore. <laughs> Underscore. <laughs> this guy up here blocks the doorway. Um, you, you have to hit him a little bit to get him out of the way. I don't know why I had my cleaver <laughs> extended. All right, so now I had he's going to pull out the threaded cane here. He picked this up at the beginning of the game, used a uh, glitch to get two weapons, because there is a brain sucker through this door here that he can reach with the extended form of the cane. Okay, and, sure. And uh, it will draw him towards you, and you can kill him through the door, which saves a lot of time. Otherwise, you have to go all the way down and climb a ladder to, uh, to get to him to kill him. This skip gives you the orphanage key, and it's, uh, it's called the orphanage key skip. Mm. Yeah, so the... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Very exciting, man. Every skip in this game is super exciting. Sewer skip skips the sewer, if you were unaware. <laughs> uh, this brain sucker right here can sometimes give you a little bit of trouble. And that pickup right there is a really, really crucial one. That's a that badge that allows us to buy more B-Split pellets. Yeah, that's a really yeah, important so thing. We don't have to go pick them more up. You can just buy them in the dream. Now I can die 42 times and still have enough pellets. Are you guys excited <laughs> to see me die 42 times? <laughs> yeah. One guy. About. Yeah, one guy. All right, we're headed to the boss we mentioned earlier, which is just those blue guys, except a bunch more of them. Celestial Emissary. The blue man group. The blue dude. So they spawn continuously in this fight, and it's kind of confusing, but there's actually one of them that actually has a full health bar. This one right and here. If you find them, you can see. This is it. the boss. The others are just little enemies. And they're pretty easy, honestly, so. Yeah. If, if you, yeah, good job, good job. If, Please don't clap, that boss. <laughs> if, if you damage that guy, then he'll transform into a really huge one, but uh, in the speedrun strat. And then just casually playing honestly, too, you can just kill oh, him before yeah. he transforms. Okay. Damage output is so high at this point, he didn't get yeah. a chance to transform. Hey, really buddy. <laughs> oh, that guy wanted to join. He join wanted party. to join the party. All right, uh, here we come to actually a really cool boss. Uh, one of my personal favorites. This is a really cool looking uh, boss. He breed his daughter of the cosmos. Um, another limb boss here. She's actually really tough, but he'll be able to pretty much keep her uh, staggered just as he could do with like other limb bosses yeah, as this well. Yeah, they're very consistent boss in the speed run. So you can hit her limbs before she even like starts to fight, which will damage her. And then as soon as she aggroes, you can you have enough damage output where you can just stagger her. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and like, yep. There she goes. Great job. <laughs> nice. We're almost done with the um, in-game bosses, and then we're gonna head to the DLC.
if you've ever felt fought that boss BL4 or like a low damage run, you'll be very fun. upset not yeah. fun. <laughs> with what you just saw. I mean, even if you just fought that boss casually, fully leveled up, she's, she can be really tough. We got time for a donation? Yes, sir. We have a $3,000 donation oh, from El Graymark. Awesome. The donation awesome. message says, can't risk it. And in this case, it is referring to our bonus game, Secure Any Percent, which has been met. Yes, Woo. nice. Awesome. <laughs> oh, that's so exciting. That'll be right after this. It's going to be awesome. Sekiro is a great speed run, guys. So you have something to look forward to. We've now entered the DLC, which I would say is probably, well, personally my favorite FromSoft DLC that they've Life made. Far. I agree yeah. with that, yeah. Um, the DLC is, everything about it is incredible. The area design, the enemy design. Uh, super, super tough boss fights, but they're so cool, man. Like, oh, you guys will see. You guys are in for a treat. Yeah. But this next box is not a deal. Yeah, we, we just went to the DLC to get the lamp. But we're going to go fight the first <laughs> boss of the game, or what could be a first boss of the game, and you'll see just how good it is. This guy is pretty is. difficult, honestly. <laughs> I've fought him. Um, I've probably died to this boss more than... And other than Gascoin, I've died to this boss more than any other boss, I think. Um, he can kill your run pretty quick, so let's hope we get uh, some... <laughs> I can't keep a straight face. <laughs> <laughs> this boss dies in about, uh, what is it, four hits? Five hits. Five yeah, hits. about five hits. So like, like we said, this boss is an early game boss. Yeah, um, you're meant to find him first before Father Gascoin even. And so he's got very little health and a very limited moveset. And when you come to him with a plus nine weapon late in the game, he just has no chance. <clears throat> we have $10 from RZR360. Hey, Razor. Hey, Hadi. Don't forget our deal. <laughs> I don't remember what What's the deal the was, man. <laughs> we have to know. Oops. <laughs> you gotta donate again to <laughs> let me know what the deal was. <laughs> Here's Cleric Beast. You can just see the health bar just plummeting. There it goes. Amazing fight. <laughs> Super skillful. What? Yeah. I don't know if you guys have noticed, but there are a lot of limb bosses in Bloodborne. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, it's a very cool mechanic yeah. you know, in the game. They want to show it off. And a lot of newer boss strats have actually really, uh, mm -hmm. recently been uh, discovered using that limb soreness, and it's really uh, whittled and optimized the run down quite mm -hmm. a bit, even in, you know, how old is this game now? Four years old, yeah. and it's still getting optimized to this day. Yeah, because it lets you face some bosses way earlier than you used to be able to with old strats. I'm going to try to do a new strat on the, a later boss in the DLC here. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> so I had he had he had about 65 insight there, and we uh, noted earlier that you can buy uh, things with insight. Um, he was just able to buy the blood rock, which allowed him to get a plus 10 weapon now. So we will not be upgrading our weapon uh, any further. We also have all the gems that we need for it. And you want to do an insight dump when you get too much because uh, it can lower your damage output a little bit. Yeah, so now we are on the DLC, and uh, there's quite a bit of running at the beginning uh, in order to get to the first boss, and it's, it can be really sketchy. There's some tough enemies here. He's going into a, a clone of the area where he fought Vicar Amelia earlier, and there's no boss there right now. He's just picking up an item. You can read all the donations right now. Every single one. Every single one. Wow. <laughs> awesome. We have $20 from Bit Universe. Was going to donate for glitches, but now for Sekiro. Good luck to Ahadi. Don't forget those awesome metal ladders. Thank you. Yeah. We have a $25 anonymous donation. Ladders. What a thrill. <laughs> what a thrill. <laughs> what a thrill. <laughs> we have $25 from DP Plant 36. Hey, DP <laughs> Plant. Up. Good luck to my boy Ahadi. Give us the glitch exhibition. Thank you, DP. We have $25 from Blueberry Brioche. Hey. Hey, Bri. <laughs> Keep it up, Ahadi. You're playing wonderfully. Thank you, Bri. We have $50 from Buffington. My best friend and I spent an entire night trying to beat Father Gascoigne, <laughs> and I just watched him beat it in 10 seconds. 
Excited to see the rest of this run. Excited to see Sekiro. Sekiro's gonna be awesome. Yeah, I'm excited that that made the goal. Another place that I don't have to quit out, so I lied. Uh, <laughs> another safety quit out, but... Uh, this one is worth it. Yeah, it can be really worth it. These guys um, can block you in the door and just kill your whole run. And this is like 50 minutes, almost 50 minutes into like uh, an hour, just over an hour long run. So you don't want to risk it <laughs> this late. So he'll pop a blue elixir here because he has to run through this river of blood. First of all, these blood ticks, they can spit blood at you and like it staggers you and they can it can kill you. They do a lot of damage. Um, and there's also going to be another ladder coming up where there's going to be a hunter there. And this blue elixir uh, allows uh, him to see you a bit later than normal so you have enough time to climb the ladder. He might yeah. hit you a few times, but uh, you should be able to survive. Yeah, usually you get one gunshot from him, but... Uh... Oh. Interesting. Oh, yeah. that was so close. There's, there's the gun. No, I don't think I've ever seen that. Was that was not supposed to happen. Oh, uh, <laughs> yeah. If you lose, if you lose all your stamina on a ladder, you fall off. So I had like one stamina. That was there. a little scary. <laughs> but we got it. Uh, and I want to hear your guys' best reason in the chat and also in the crowd here uh, for this boss here. This is one of the best bosses in the game, according to a lot of people, including me. I love this yeah. boss. Ludwig, yeah. <laughs> he's not so the most appealing to listen to. Cool looking, yeah. I don't know, he's just... Definitely a, a fan favorite. Yeah. Oh. He's got a really cool cutscene, which you guys can't see. And he screams a lot, as you can hear. And once yeah. again, another stagger, another limb ball, so we can just stagger here. But he has two phases, which makes him really unique, because in phase two, oh. he actually stands up and uh, he has a Moonlight Greatsword. Yeah. His second phase is very cool. Seeing lots of screaming in chat right now. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Keep it up, guys. And he also has one of the best um, OSTs in the game, yeah. in my opinion. But we kill him so fast, we only get to hear it, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if, if you haven't heard it, look up the Ludwig Bloodborne OST. It, it's really great. Nice job, man. Great job. Boots him in the seat. This guy might kill me, but hopefully not. Okay, we're fine. Yeah, another wheelchair guy who packs a really big punch. Yeah, they have, like, these gigantic guns. I don't know why. And it just, like, comically, <laughs> like, ridiculous. Sends them flying backwards. You can't go up this elevator unless you grab the item that I had he grabbed earlier at the beginning of the DLC. We have $10 from Erisa Sarah 30 Hey, Erisa. Hey. Erisa. Go, a howdy go. Best ladder percent I've ever seen. <laughs> yes. This, this is fun. It shows off how uh, the fall damage works in this game. It's not nearly as unforgiving as fall damage in the Dark Souls games. You can fall really great distances and not lose too much health. That's pretty hard to do. It, it takes... Uh, relatively precise timing to land at the bottom there without dying. Yeah. Um, because you'd have to take two drops. Uh, he picked up uh, Lawrence's skull there, um, which is an item he needs in order to fight uh, the last boss that he'll fight in the DLC. Mm -hmm. So it's really essential. I'm going to grab these elixirs for safety. Oh. And Rebecca. also uh, because you'll save a little bit of time here, uh, real time, not in game time. But uh, I'll drink an elixir here and uh, I'll avoid quitting out. Uh, these enemies here are actually really, really scary. They uh, mm. do a lot of damage, and they have uh, like a fury swipe attack where they just won't stop punching you, and it yeah. like stun locks you. They can be really unpredictable. Um, if you've ever played Dark Souls 2, they're a little bit like the Hide Knights in that game. They'll, they'll just be sitting there, and then the next second they're just swinging at you like crazy. So yeah, a blue elixir is, is really essential to, uh, to kind of run through this area. This boss coming up is actually, unironically, very scary, even though um, most people probably think it's one of the easier bosses in the entire game. Uh, they can one-shot you pretty much yeah. with such low vitality, and it's a, it's a very scary reset. Well, it's not really a reset point, but it's very scary to get here in a row. <laughs> Dodge the undodgeable attack. Undodgeable. 
Yeah, so this guy here, he has a lot of different attacks. That was actually one of his rarest attacks. Um, yeah, the, the uh, lunge attack with that. Those are the hard ones to dodge because yeah. they're so delayed. You have to mm -hmm. like, you have to, you have to kind of wait. But if you wait too long, then you'll get hit by the faster attacks. So. Imagine waiting in a speed run. Yeah, I know. Imagine waiting. It's not a wait run. So we're going to do a little <laughs> nifty skip here where Hattie will actually drop down quite a bit, uh, and it'll take him directly to the boss fight, actually. Yeah, that's a very convenient little skip. Enduratize is mad right now. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I, I'm sorry. I forgot. <laughs> oh, did you promise him you'd do the... No, but I really wanted to. Nah, that would have been I mean, cool. This run is pretty good. There's so. another version of that skip, which is a, little, a lot harder to do. All right, so here we have the living failures. Once again, we'll pop a pellet and a uh, bolt paper. We have to kill this first failure here. He has a lot of health, more than the others, but the plan is you have to kill him pretty quickly uh, to get to this spawn point here, because they'll spawn in one spot. But if you kill him fast enough, um, they'll just keep spawning here, so he won't have to really like run around the arena. He can just stay in one spot and uh, kill the uh, failures off. You can see his beast meter is fully charged now, so he's doing as much damage as he possibly can. And yeah, the, uh, the ideal fight for this, you just stand in one place and just keep spamming R1. This is the good cycle. Yeah, we got some pretty good RNG here. Uh, different failures can give you, like, different attacks. Mm -hmm. So he did really good there. Yeah, great fight. Yeah. There, is, uh, there is no way this quit out saves time, even though I, uh, I haven't actually tested. But um, <clears throat> I quit out here because it keeps your Beast Hood meter going. Uh, into the Maria fight because there's two back-to-back -back fights right here. So. Yeah, the very next door is another boss fight. It makes the the fight a lot easier. So that's my. Uh, <laughs> I don't really care about saving that uh, five, ten seconds, whatever. Mm -hmm. It's really a pity, but this is the only spot where we really can utilize this. Yeah, going into a, a, a new boss fight with a full meter, and this next boss fight is another very difficult yeah. fight. So yeah, it's pretty interesting, like uh, Hattie just mentioned, like his meter is still full from the fight he just had, but since he quit out, it's like he didn't even take the pellet to begin with. So he can pop another one, but he'll still retain that meter that he has. So the damage output is already going to be like off the charts. Yeah. You don't get a chance to see the lore in the speedrun, but the doll in the Hunter's Dream is modeled after this boss, Lady Maria. So for her, you'll see what Hattie's doing. It's pretty much transform attacks, uh, which can stagger lock her pretty much, and uh, he can do a lot of damage to her. Oh my. She's already into her second phase. She's got one more phase to go where she's gonna float up in the air like that, and he killed her before <laughs> she even started it. Great job. <laughs> nice fight. Yeah, Maria typically has three phases to her fights. He killed her so fast, we didn't even get to see the third phase, yeah. so. Her third phase, if you ever fight her casually or on a challenge run where you don't level up or something, it's ridiculous. It's gonna be really, really frustrating to fight. The fire is the worst, because you can hit her while she's doing an attack, yeah. and the fire will still come in, so you'll just get, like, stun locked. Yeah, she's got lingering hitboxes in the third phase, which are really annoying. We're headed to a boss that a lot of people say is the hardest boss in the game. It's controversial, though. Some people say the last boss is. I would say if, you, if you've played this game, uh, you have to put this guy toward the top as one of the hardest bosses. He's, oh, he's definitely sure. one of the hardest. I might, I might say he's the hardest for me. Not even just this game, like in, yeah, in Souls Yeah. 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 <laughs> he's really, really difficult to fight. These guys are also extremely loud, I noticed. Yeah. No. <laughs> um, Luckily, there's there's a very consistent strat to fight this boss. In this yeah. Run. As long as I don't get instant lightning. Yeah. Which I hope I do, because then I can show off the second phase and <laughs> prove that I'm not just a speedrunner that doesn't know how to fight bosses. Doesn't know how to fight him casually. So I used an elixir there. Normally I wouldn't, but... Um, there's a an big enemy there if you, uh, if you light that lamp uh, and you don't have an elixir, the enemy will follow you and then you have to quit out so you'll lose time. Yeah, the enemy will be right there at the door just standing there smashing his weapon down over and over again. This also probably does not save time, um, but it's cool and... It's convenient, you yeah. don't have to run through the area. The, um, 
the no quit out version of this skip is it's not harder. I just haven't done it in a very long time and I didn't practice it, so not a big deal. And we're gonna walk through a wall in a second to get oh, there. Oh yeah, super standard. Yeah, yeah. This is a pretty cool skip. I, I love doing it. <laughs> he just like clips through the whole area, takes him right to the boss. It's a good party trick to impress your friends. <laughs> First try. I've never died to this boss. All right. <laughs> Here we are with the Orphan of Cos. Like we said, one of the harder bosses you'll fight. That um, big blob on the ground is Cos. Which would be his mother, actually. Yeah. But the, the strat you want to go here is you typically want to get all the backstabs you can on Orphan. Um, there, he has a lot of moves where you're able to wrap around him and uh, get the Charged R2 off, which will increase your beast meter and it, you can get two backstabs on him because it will stagger him. Yeah, you want to bait out uh, moves that will let you do a charge dart two on him from behind, and then you do another one. It, it does a lot of damage. You can see his beast meter is already full. Uh, once his health gets a little bit lower, you can see what Hattie did there. He kind of did like a butt scratch motion. So whenever you uh, you do that, it forces Orphan's AI to start jumping, which allows you to get extra backstabs off of him. It's a nice little strat. So, oh, he was actually able to kill him without him yeah. transforming. <laughs> There's no death animation to kill the Orphan of Cause in Phase 1, so that he just stands there like an idiot. Uh, that's what you're looking for in that it's type just, of fight. You can't really ask for yeah. too much more for that. That was really RNG cool. wise. Alright, so now I'm heading to the last boss of the DLC, so hopefully it goes well. Another boss people say is one of the hardest bosses in all of From Software's history. And he screams a lot. <laughs> he screams. He's, he, oh, yeah, you you, you, you want to take your headphones off <laughs> yeah. if you're fighting him for hours. And also, uh, I want to see more Rees. Uh, I should have said that for an Orphan. <laughs> I mean, Orphan's like the, the Rees-iest boss in the entire game. Yeah. Well, this next boss is very Re as well. Get all, get all the different Rees yeah. that you guys have and just spam them. Got time for a donation? Uh, maybe one. Maybe one. We've got $100 from BB Mercy. Mercy. Hey, BB. <laughs> hey, Hattie. It's been a wild ride watching your growth as a streamer and a runner. Seeing you get to where you are tonight honestly means the world to me, and I wouldn't miss it for the world. Go show GDQ how a real Bloodborne run looks. Love you, man. <laughs> Thank you, man. Love you, too. So like Apple said, this is actually another really tough boss that people uh, will struggle on. Um, but in the speed run, it's not too bad because he's once again another limb boss where we've optimized the strats so well that he'll pretty much stay staggered a majority of the fight. This is a new strat, so hopefully I get it. This boss actually looks exactly like Cleric Beast, which was the really short boss he fought earlier, except that this boss is, has lava pouring out of its uh, arms and legs. And about 20 times tougher, I'd say. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's, it's not the same boss. It just looks the same. Wow, Chat is I definitely sc screaming. <laughs> nice fight. Great fight, dude. That was really good. Thank you, Hex and Falk. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hex uh, and Falk and Cookie, those are like the three people that just find everything in this game. And Dank Oyster, or Dan Coyster, depending on who you ask. <laughs> yeah, there are some people who've devoted so many hours to just finding cool skips and glitches in this game. And Dist. Dist, Dist finds yeah. the bad skips. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Dist. Uh, so the DLC is actually all done now, and we're actually going back to the main game now. Um, we uh, mentioned earlier that Hattie went to go pick up the Kaner summon, so uh, he's going to fight a boss called the Witches of Hemwick first, but after that he'll be able to travel to the, uh, another area called Kaner's, uh, where he can fight another boss. Yeah. Witches is another boss that you were meant to find a lot earlier in the game, so they're not going to give him any trouble at all. I shouldn't say that. <laughs> uh, you can get Mario'd. That's, uh, yeah, that's yeah. A, a term thrown around. Yeah, you can get Mario'd. Not anything to do with the video game character. There's a <laughs> Bloodborne speedrunner called Marionette. And, uh, he's translating this right now. Oh, yeah, he's doing the, the, <laughs> Portuguese, the Portuguese restream, so that's cool. 
Don't worry, you're not the only one, Mario. <laughs> <laughs> I think we've all we've all died to uh, one of the scripted, quote unquote, scripted yeah. like at <laughs> least once. But the witches have a really, really small health pool, so for the most part, they're not in trouble. It's an exclusive flow. Yeah. I mean, if you run this game long enough, you will be killed by every single possible thing in it. So this area is uh, Hemwick Channel Lane, and uh, there's actually just... It's just a big running segment, so you get to the boss. Mm -hmm. Not really a lot going on here. A few witches and trolls. Oh, yeah, all the pickups are for early yeah. game, so he doesn't need any of them. We can actually go here before we even fight Amelia. Yeah. So quite early. It's, it's really nice if you want to get uh, your weapon upgraded quite early in, in a run for like a challenge run or such. It is. Probably donations for like the next, uh, I don't know, four hours. <laughs> <laughs> four hours. Well, good news. I happen to have a pretty long one here I was saving for an opportune moment. Okay. It's $10 from Romanticore. Hey. Oh, my, my man. That's, that's my like best friend, man. Hey, guys. Romanticore here. I want to wish Ahadi good luck on the Bloodborne run. He's one of the best runners in the community, and I hope he's able to show off his ability in front of everyone. I also want to thank him for being my friend. You've definitely brightened up my life since we became friends. That's awesome, dude. That's really you, nice. Thank you so much, Stern Joge. <laughs> Romantic Stern. Or another great runner of this game, by the way. Also, big hello to our couch crew, Apple, K. Witty, and l the luxurious Curious Peanut. <laughs> the luxurious Peanut. <laughs> the luxurious Curious Peanut. Have a great time at the event, and I'll see you next Tuesday when you get home. Awesome. Here's the witches right now. So there's actually two witches in this fight. You'll, you will only see one health bar um, until you kill one, which is really interesting because it's you know it's like a hide and seek game basically. And, uh, first time players, you won't know that yeah. for a long time. But at this point, his web is still upgraded. They they spawn in one spot. And he just melts their health bar. Yeah, it, it's a really scary <laughs> fight the very first time you play because you kill the first one and you think, oh good, the fight's over. But the music is still going and everything, and then, and then another another witch shows up. But yeah, it's, so that was hard. <laughs> now we're heading to Logarius. That quit out definitely doesn't save uh, real time. I just did it because I want the enemies to not be in the doorway. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if we mentioned this, but quitting out resets enemy position. So that was a, kind of a safety quit out, but in runs you would do that because it saves about two seconds. Yeah, I've always been a fan of that quit out because it's actually one of those ones where you have to, if you quit out in the arena, it becomes like normal area and you're just in the arena and you haven't moved. But if you do it on top of that barrel, it'll actually move you outside of the arena and save you a couple seconds. Yeah, it's, it's in game cool time, obviously. So here he's going to use the Kanehurst summons that he picked up earlier. I would say this next area is probably my favorite area in the whole game. It's awesome. It's a really cool it's, area. Dude. It reminds me of Harry Potter, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's probably man. the coolest area outside of the DLC, I think. It's awesome. This is the home stretch right here. This mm -hmm. is the, uh, the last boss before we go back to the dream and just finish the game. So, uh, pretty good, I mean. Wasn't expecting to just have no mistakes at all. Yeah, this has been going really smoothly. Super though. uninteresting. No. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> did someone show you, how, show you how to find this boss? Because I thought you yeah, didn't I, know where he was. It's like it's really snowy here, man. I've never been able to actually find this boss. Yeah. Will he do it this time? Uh, I hope so. Like, like, look at this architecture, man. You gotta yeah, appreciate that. Awesome. <laughs> I didn't cool. look down, but the floors are like mirror shiny. It's and the awesome. the enemies in this area, <laughs> these these like weeping ladies who attack you if you get too close, are really cool. Like, oh yeah, they're like they're like the uh, the re enemies of this game. So you got mm -hmm. a bunch of re bosses, but these guys they'll scream. I mean, I'm gonna actually get hit by the the dart on purpose. So you guys can uh, be graced by oh. the, the lovely sounds of yeah, the screaming. Do it, do it. <laughs> When you speedrun, like, especially this game, you, you can't really focus on details of areas and things. You're just focused on your run. But we were able to, like, just fully go through the game. You, you, you just get a better appreciation for, like, how yeah. well, this, how well uh, they made this game and, like, 
how detailed it is, man. Yeah, it's this really game is incredible. really worth just walking around and exploring. Oh, no. It was an accident, I swear. <laughs> Hope we got some good reads from that. <laughs> that was awesome. This little jump saves you a lot of time. I, don't, I still don't believe this is a skip. It's just creative parkour. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I don't know if it was like not. Yeah, intended. I don't know if it was because there is intended. a staircase yeah. there, so I, I don't know feel like it is intended. You think so? I think so. But you know. I don't think so, honestly. I mean, like, I, I it might have been like an oversight. I don't know. It doesn't seem intentional because I don't know why they'd make that whole area on the other side if it was like intended you that you just skip it. Either way, it's an incredibly easy <laughs> jump to make. You can do it playing casually just yeah. by pressing the jump button. Which is conveniently located on the same button as sprint. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and roll. Which can get you killed a lot of times. <laughs> it's, uh, I'm not sure why they didn't use other buttons. This whole area running to Logarius is very cool, running on the rooftops and stuff. Except for when you have to do it twice. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, uh, this boss probably is the longest run back in the game if you die to him. Yeah, I think you're right about that. There's this uh, gargoyle that no one's ever died to <laughs> back on the roof. Oh, boy. <laughs> Let's not talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so this guy, this guy can, he's pretty easy, but as long as he cooperates. He's got a little bit of RNG, yeah. So Ligarius is a pretty interesting boss. In his first phase, he's kind of more uh, in a retreat mode, as you can see. And he'll he's very passive. Yeah, like a, a defensive type. But once you get him out to about half health, he'll transform. Um, but you can backstab him here, and uh, Hattie should be able to kill him before he gets to phase two. Yeah. Yeah, so. Great. <laughs> Easy. Great fight. Yeah, you, you didn't even see yeah. the Logarius fight there. Yeah, usually in phase two, he'll switch to an aggressive style, and he'll come at you. He can even do aerial attacks, which is pretty interesting. Yeah, <laughs> he'll, he'll swing at you, and he'll also have swords shooting at you from all directions. BL4 is actually incredibly cool fight on Logarius. Yeah. It's really, uh, really skill-based. That one's just RNG in all bosses, but... We are on the last two bosses of the game now. Yes, sir. And you guys probably heard us talk about Beal 4 a lot. If you don't know what that is, it's blood level 4, basically. Uh, level 4 is the lowest level you can be in the game. So it's like essentially like a soul level 1 if you've done that in Dark Souls. Yeah, you, you beat the whole game without leveling your character at all. Very difficult. All right, so here we have German the first Hunter. Uh, he has a nice, pretty cool looking scythe. And uh, yeah. he has a lot of attacks. You can pretty much just parry like a Hattie's doing. Keep your range and uh, transform attacks, keep them staggered, build up the meter. He too transforms at about half health, which you can backstab then mm -hmm. and uh, get the. Oh, okay. I thought he was going to do a repulse there, but he went for uh, another transform attack. Oh, he got good RNG there. <laughs> yeah, that was really good RNG. Great fight. This next boss uh, is kind of a cakewalk compared to some of the last bosses of the game. So uh, the, the three umbilical cords that he picked up and popped, this is, uh, he's able to fight this boss now, which is Moon Presence. Mm -hmm. uh, doesn't have a ton of health, but it's a really bizarre boss. But another limb boss. It's, it's really scary looking, but it's not really a difficult fight. Uh, you'll be good. <laughs> <laughs> that run was incredible. That was good. That was, that was wonderful. Very, very That's good. amazing run, guys. man. That's amazing point. run. And time. Great round. Nice job, man. Great round. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Whew. That was cool. Are you cold? This is what Pikachu has turned into. <laughs> <laughs> little slug. Pikachu has evolved. <laughs> Could you evolved into a metapod? So you actually, after doing all of that, you get turned into a slug. Yeah, I mean, so. like, you do the, the <laughs> best ending, the good ending is getting turned into a slug, yeah. apparently. And that's why we killed the doll, because you turned us to a slug. <laughs> all right, I guess I can check my in game time, but uh, it doesn't really matter because I just watched a cutscene and let it run. But. Go ahead and close the execution. Yes, sir. Yep. Uh, I need to get my, my USB here for the glitch exhibition. While you get that out, I have $25 from Game Dad. 
Nothing better than a GDQ weekend. Let's go Bloodborne Glitch Exhibition. 109.46, yeah. pretty good. I'm happy with Oh, that. great nice job, man. Great time. Cool. Awesome. So uh, is there like a computer I can use to plug this in so I can drag the files around? Is there like a computer I can use to like drag the files around on this? Uh, I need to, there's multiple files on this, so I need to drag them around so I can put them on the PS4. All right, cool. So yeah, for those of you who did not hear the backstage chatter, we will be taking a quick break while we get set up for that glitch exhibition. Um, thank you all for your very generous donations and helping us meet that incentive, as well as our bonus game, which will be happening right after that gl glitch exhibition. We have $100 from A Night Adrift. Always have to donate for my favorite game of all time. Great run so far. Let us cleanse these foul streets. Ooh woo. We have $20 from Wraith. Been waiting all day for the Bloodborne run. I hope my donation goes toward enabling more to play this awesome game. We have $25 from Ike205. I'm in the room watching this live, and I want to tell my sons Dallin and Ty that I love them. Dad. Dark Souls, fun for the whole family. We have $400 from Elspeth. Let's see some glitches. We have $30 from Avon X2. Hey guys, this is the first GDQX I'm donating to and I'm glad to be doing it. You guys are the chillest place to hang out at TwitchCon. Keep up the good work and put this towards Ollie for the Tony Hawk run. Um, and you know, checking in on that Tony Hawk's uh, Skater Choice donation bid war, um, Ollie the Magic Bum is in a commanding lead with 145 over Tony Hawk and Tony Hawk Classic. Also, I do certainly agree that this room is definitely the chillest room to hang out in at TwitchCon. Um, I actually sometimes wander over here because the other rooms are pretty crowded and get wall-to-wall -wall people. And also, usually, like, the water coolers in the back tend to have water in them as opposed to the other rooms, which are usually empty. So, yeah, if you want some water, come over here and hang out with us. We have $50 from Chelsea236. Love this so much. Let's keep those runs going. And we are all good to go on setup, so let's see some glitches. All right, so I'm starting it off with uh, the... It's ridiculously hard to get here, so I'm not even gonna... I wasn't even gonna try to do it live, but uh, all you have to know is that I'm here, and uh, you don't need to know how. <laughs> <laughs> but I can drop in here, and... Oh, there's the Shadows of Yarnum, that fight that gave me so much trouble. They're just, uh, they're just standing there, so I can... Uh, I can, uh, I can take my time here. And even if you hit them, they just keep standing there. It's great. If you've seen Dark Souls 3 speedruns, they use this on uh, yeah. Abyss, Abyss Watchers. Watchers. Yeah, it's if you've watched awesome. Dark Souls 3 runs, this looks very familiar. Yeah. It's not consistent to do for Bloodborne, sadly, but... It is very satisfying <laughs> to give them a, a pummeling after you've died. Man, this guy's tanky. Oh, my God. <laughs> this is a hard boss. Ooh. Goodness. That was, that was pretty difficult. Great fight, man. dude. Great <laughs> fight. <laughs> All right, so I apologize for this, but I'm going to have to load save files here. The only way I know how. The, jo the joys of console running. <laughs> So yeah, for those of you who aren't here at the event, Ahadi has actually just walked across the stages at the PC so we can load those files in. Maybe someday Bloodborne for PC. Maybe. Doubtful. <laughs> Extremely doubtful. Very doubtful at this point. 
But you know, if it if it ever did come to PC, there would be a whole bunch of new glitches and skips because of the frame rate. That's true. 60 FPS. Mm -hmm. That'd be sweet though. <laughs> okay, this next one is what we call a death cam. These are by far my favorite skips in uh, in Souls. Yeah, these are very cool. Uh, there's a few death cam skips in Dark Souls 3 as well. So this one's called Amelia Skip, Vicar Amelia Skip, and uh, keeping the trend with our unoriginal <laughs> skip naming, uh, this one skips Vicar Amelia. So yeah, it's very shocking. It's a really cool skip to watch. Did I load the save? I forget. Well, I guess we'll find out. <laughs> We're about to find out. Uh, yes, I did. And obviously, you won't see this in an all bosses run because uh, uh, you need to kill all the bosses. Yeah. So, yes. but this they, is, these are uh, used at any percent. Yes, yeah, this, this one specifically is used at any percent. Yeah, this one is actually useful, unlike that last skip that we showed you. Nice, <laughs> flawless. <laughs> that was intentional, but too yeah. fast. Yeah. Totally. I was, I was uh, on fire there a little bit. So it's uh, you get onto these roofs. Um, a lot of people don't know. There's a couple items you can grab there. So for those of you who haven't seen Death Cam, it's, it's uh, <laughs> first time you see it is a bit confusing, but mm -hmm. I'll explain it. I'm actually going to do three Death Cam. Well, two and then one if I can get it to work. So we'll see how that goes. Okay, so that fence is pretty difficult to get on, but if you roll right there, now it's top-down camera. <laughs> now it's uh, 2D Bloodborne. And you and just run all down. the way through here. Yeah, upside down, 2D, reversed, and you can only control the character by running um, forward and left and right. So, and I'm gonna die. That wasn't very nice, that guy. Yeah. <laughs> kind of just disappear because the area is like not fully loaded in, so you can kind of yeah. just clip through everything. Yeah, the camera thinks that you're dead, so the, so it's not loading new areas and it's not changing the camera angle. I should have showed that. Amelia was still alive, but you guys believe me, right? Hopefully. Yeah, yeah. He did not kill Amelia yet. So usually you have to kill Amelia in order to get to the next section of the game. It's locked off, uh, which would be to the Forbidden Woods. But because of this, and uh, you can just come. Oh, there is a way you can show. You just talk to the guy. After oh, yeah, here we go. <laughs> you guys are going to love this. Yeah, so just quitting out resets the camera. So, but it keeps your position. That's the that's the main uh, part that we need to care about because it lets you go through doors basically. And uh, yeah, so this is a cool skip. I enjoy the death cams a lot. This next one is probably my favorite though. It's the one reborn skip that I'm gonna do after this. Oh, that one is really cool. Yeah. Okay, so the door is closed. If I talk to this guy, he's gonna ask me for the password. Oh. It, you gotta look. It? You gotta look at him. Oh, do you? <laughs> So this guy's asking me for a password. I just I just broke through. He's already passed the door yeah. you need the password <laughs> for. I don't know the password, man. Now I'm supposed <laughs> to get through. Keep quiet, I guess. So. And then you can just run straight to Forbidden Woods. So that's used in any percent. Very it's useful skip for any percent. Really awesome. Because you skip an entire boss. And Great the next job. one is not used in any percent. <laughs> Hattie will be right back after these messages. <laughs> well, we got a quick downtime. I just want to shout out Speed Souls. It's uh, the, pretty much the speed running community for all Souls games. And like, I'm quite an, of a newer runner, and it, they've been nothing but uh, friendly and helpful. And anything that you could ever ask, or and they're very welcoming. Great so community. if anybody is ever uh, interested in running Bloodborne or even Souls games, uh, check out the Discord. Um, and uh, we'd be welcome to have you guys. Yeah, it's a really welcome community of just super friendly people. And there's also the Speed Souls website, so if you're trying to learn how to run, they have uh, all the runners. Uh, there's uh, a wiki with all the skips. Yeah, they have uh, notes, and you can uh, watch their runs and, and practice. And then, like Penis of the Discord, and people are there really friendly if you're trying to get started, and they'll break it down for you, though. They won't withhold anything from you, so. So this is a skip I definitely did not learn yesterday. Um, <laughs> and I'm going to see if I remember how to do it. So You're about to do One Reborn? Super prepared. Yeah, One Reborn skip. This, this is, I, I was really amazed when I saw this. I just thought it was the coolest thing. And I did it exactly once. So. <laughs> ah, you got this. That's plenty of times. <laughs> That's plenty of times. <laughs> yeah. 
Okay, so you want to jump on this thing and then fail it. <laughs> <laughs> that's Failing important. it is key. Yeah. That's, that's a very important step. Sometimes you have to fail it, you know, 10 or 12 times. Yeah, even. before you get it once. Okay, there we go. Nice. And then Great. over there, and I didn't get it. And now we load the save file. It's riveting stuff, <laughs> I know. So when he jumps down there, he should trigger the death cam. You have to kind of jump um, far enough so that you don't die, because there is a kill box there. Yeah. Uh, but close enough that you hit the death cam box. Because the way the game works is when you're falling down into a place where you should be dying, um, like out of bounds, uh, it first makes your camera overhead, and then it kills you. So if you can somehow <clears throat> trigger the overhead camera and then land back in bounds, uh, you can do some pretty cool skips. Mm -hmm. Yeah, once the death cam is activated, it's not going to load any new things further on in the game. So you can walk past places you should be able to walk past. Wasn't it nice of him to put jump and roll in the same place? I, I mean, <laughs> whoever, whoever decided that was a good design choice, I need to speak with you. Yeah, I think they rethought that with Sekiro. <laughs> <laughs> imagine, imagine doing it twice in a row. I can. I've done it pretty times. <laughs> <laughs> Can't wait for Elden Ring where every single attack yeah, is going to be on the same button. Every single like movement, everything is going to mm -hmm. be on the same button. There we go. Nice. Yeah, there, that's perfect. Good job. Where'd you go? I don't know. Yeah. I'm lost. <laughs> so now where we are is on the like the street leading up to One Reborn, and I've already triggered the fight. That's why this is not used in any percent, because it requires you triggering the fight and then going back to the top to, <clears throat> to execute the glitch. So uh, unfortunately, it's not used in any percent. It's one of my favorite skips, so. It's a very cool skip. And you know, this empty space. Yeah, if you guys can't tell where this is at, this is where he was getting uh, uh, spit at from the uh, things yes. in the boxes. So mm. it's pre pretty empty. So I'll now. try to get the fog gate uh, prompt here. So you guys can see where I'm at. I'm right before the boss fight right here coming up. You so can even hear it. Mm -hmm. You can see creep up there. There it is. So it says traverse nightmare fog. So I'm at the at the boss door, but since I'm in death camp, you can just walk right through it. Yeah. That That's whispering awesome. you hear is the the women who shoot fireballs at you in the regular fight. So one reborn is just standing there, I guess. I don't know if he spawns in or not. Yeah, he's standing there, and the, the ladies are standing up on their things. Okay, so now I need to figure out where Mikalash is here. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Almost there. I gotta figure out. Okay, I was a little bit too far. Yeah, I wasn't far enough back. Now I'm, like, all the way back. Okay. You can't tell by, like, watching this, but... Oh, I... Uh, <laughs> uh, <I> so thought... <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, there we go. Nice. Uh, nice. Mo <laughs> moving small amounts in death camp is actually extremely difficult. Yeah. <laughs> so that skips one reborn. It's not usable in the run, sadly. But okay, so now I'm in. Uh, I just skipped him. He's he's still there. If I went back there, one reborn would still be there. Mm -hmm. So you can just uh, go right past him. That's one of my favorites, like I said. Yeah. And now I need to leave again. <laughs> So while Ahadi is loading that next save file, I do want to mention that after this glitch exhibition, as well as our bonus run Sekiro, we have Paper Mario the Thousand Year Door, and we do have an incentive for a Thousand Year Door, which is to recruit Jabal. We are at $1,600 out of $3,000, that is $1,400 to go, so if you would like to see some cute bunnies in your Thousand Year Door, definitely donate to that incentive. What do you know about cute bunnies? I know Luality. She ain't likes cute bunnies. <laughs> I know you like bunny suits too. Nope. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> I had to. Okay, so this is a uh, this is where we get into the realm of <laughs> useless yet satisfying. So let's uh, let's check some of these out, and they're pretty difficult to do. I mean, I tried to learn the uh, the Whirly Gig saw one. These guys know what I'm talking about, but it's it's just too hard. Couldn't get it. And you guys don't want to watch me spamming Whirly Gigs off for an hour trying to get it once. <laughs> yeah, we <laughs> But these ones are quite a bit easier, so I should be able to get them. Oh, 
How long have we been going here? Oh, I guess I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so... Uh, I guess I should start with the gesture glitch. Simple. Uh, I mm -hmm. think you just Pretty fun little do that glitches. and then spam square as fast as I can. There we go. <laughs> 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 I'm just chilling, man. Just chilling. <laughs> okay, so the way that works is if you uh, use a gesture and then on the very first frame uh, after you go to your idle animation, if you use another gesture or some sort of uh, spell, it will cause you to uh, do them both at the exact same time. So it's pretty cool. Uh, so I'm going to do it with first with Augur Ebriatus because it's easy. And this is my by far my favorite combo. This is the best <laughs> one. That's a good one. Oh, yeah. There it goes. <laughs> yeah, there guys. It goes. Now it's a party. Okay. <laughs> All right, so you can also do the same deal with Call Beyond. This one's quite a bit harder, uh, but I'll try it. You hit the doll again, man. No, <laughs> I didn't get it first try. I'm sorry, guys. I'm, I failed you. <laughs> no. This one's the hardest, I think. Poor I can doll. also do it with Beast Roar. Beast Roar is pretty cool. You have to do it quite a bit faster with Beast Roar, though. Nope. Oh, man, this one's hard. Actually, I think the sit down one is the one I used before with the Beast Roar. No. We're, we're choking it. <laughs> choking it on the live stage. There we go. Nice. Oh, <laughs> there go. Poor doll, she's taking all this punishment for no reason. Oh, I almost did it twice in a row. Okay, now let's try to do it with a call beyond real quick. Uh, I think I have some bullets uh, in the uh, thing over here. And I think I'm just going to... I might try the Parl death cam once because we're already probably running too long here, but uh, that's not the storage. <laughs> did you guys know that that's not the storage? I didn't. I was unaware. Okay, so I'll try Call Beyond a few times here, and then I'll revert to the, the one that I know is hilarious. Nope, a little too early. Oh, okay, one more try, and then I'll try the Parl Death Cam a couple yeah. times, and we'll uh, right, call it here. More. No, that was close, but we're going to call it there. And I, I said I was going to do the auger one once more, but I lied again. What do we got? One more to do? And, and those gesture glitches are, I think, at least to my knowledge, are somewhat newer. Um, some Japanese runners had, or players had found them, and it, it, we were always, a lot of us were trying to figure, you know, how you do that? And uh, a, lot, a lot is lost in translation, unfortunately, but... Uh, I had it here has been kind enough to learn them for us. Yeah, I mean, they're... But they are quite difficult. They're useless, but they're fun. Good parlor tricks for the for the home. Yeah. All right, so we'll try this like two times and then we'll, we'll call it. Uh, no, it hasn't. I, I swear it has not. Okay, there we go. This one's really hard. I tried it last night, couldn't get it, so I'll put in like two tries, um, and then we'll call it, and it'll, that'll be the end. Good luck. Yeah, good luck. <laughs> <laughs> this one is really hard. Like, um, the, the line between death and successfully landing on the, on the platform is pretty, pretty slim. <clears throat> So what we're gonna do is walk really, really close to this ledge here, and I'm gonna try to line it up. Oh, that's so close. That was really, really close. Last try, and then we'll call it here. Wins baby jump, mom. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah, so like I said, there are a couple of other gesture glitches I just couldn't learn in time. So I would, lo I would have loved to have this be a little longer, but um, showed some pretty cool, some pretty cool glitches. So I'm happy. I'm gonna get that speedrunner trigger figure. Just yeah. Spamming it. <laughs> Poor controller. Yeah, man. I go through like a controller every month, man. <laughs> X button will just be mashed down right to the shroud. Okay, this looks a little better. And right there. That seems perfect. Oh, that was okay. I'm Gosh, not. Man, that's, that's, that's done for me. I, I, if I had a choice, I'd be here all day trying to do that. But, good tries. Good tries. Uh, thanks, for, thanks for having me, guys. That's going to be. That's gonna be my time. Great job, dude. That was, that was really good. And that was Bloodborne. We have ten dollars from FromFan. Amazing run, Hattie. Great job. Amazing job on the couch, fellas. I certainly agree, that was amazing. An awesome glitch exhibition. Thank you all for your generosity. I also have a $500 anonymous donation. As well as an anonymous $100 donation. Great run so far, keep it up. So earlier while Ahadi was loading a save, I, I mentioned our Recruit Jabal incentive, um, which has gotten a little bit further along. Um, but say you're maybe a bit less interested in cute bunnies and are a bit more interested in rolling up the entire world. Well, have I got the donation incentive for you. After Paper Mario the Thousand Year Door, Mr. Shasta is running Katamari Damacy, and we have an incentive there to roll up the entire world. I'm not entirely sure what exactly that means. Um, I imagine it includes rolling up the world, but anyway, that is a $2,500 incentive, and we have raised just over $700 for that. So if you would like to see what happens when we roll up the entire world, donate for that. And we are going to go ahead and take a quick ad break, so stick around, we will be right back. Welcome back to GDQX 2019. I'm still Musical Daredevil, but it appears that there is someone over at the prize desk. So let's head over there. That someone is some people. See, huh? Two people? Hey. All right, so as you can tell, Sen is not here. He's kind of like, you know, just, just recovering, resting, you know, getting ready for the final day because, hey, we're, you know, less than 24 hours away from the end of GDQX. But 
So we've got plenty of action to go. But in the meantime, I am Darkman78, and we have Worm here, who you've probably never seen on camera before, maybe not intentionally at least. Uh, but he's here to kind of help me out, you know, show off some prizes and stuff. So uh, yeah, let's get started. Uh, Worm, what do you have here in your hands? I have some Chainmail Rupee mm -hmm. dice bags. Mm -hmm. So we've got at least three of them here. This one is got another one. silver. Black. And we've got green and gold. All right. These are pretty cool. Yeah, you can, you know, you can certainly store more than just dice in them, but like uh, rupees? certainly rupees. Okay. All right. um, other I pointage. feel like you could use it as like a beanie. I... Like for like the smaller children, of course. Yes, All right. of course. All right. Well, these, of course, are uh, graciously donated to us from CMC Stone Jewelry, so thank you very much. Uh, if you make a $20 donation or more until the end of Paper Mario, the Thousand Year Door, which, of course, is our next run, or excuse me, it's after Sekiro, please forgive me, uh, you are entered to win these wonderful Chainmail Ruby dice bags, which... Hopefully you have some rubies to donate to put them in as well. That'd be pretty cool. That's right. All right, all right. This is my next, my favorite part because uh, you know I may be a little interested in these. Uh, look at these wonderful, uh, pretty cool pearlers here. Listen, Worm, I'm gonna let you go ahead and explain everything you know about every single pearler here because I know you are a huge Mega Man fan and I'm sure you know everything about these. Mm, uh -huh. I know that they have magnets on the back of okay. them. Okay, but which one is which? This is Mega Man. Okay. All right. All right. Or Rockman. Okay, that's good. This is Roll. Okay. Or Roll. Or Roll. Okay. Okay. All right, all right, all right. I've got Cutman here. Okay, all right. All right. Okay. And then good, good. I'm running out of hands. Okay, that's but fine, we'll, that's fine. We'll go. Okay, all right, what do we got? What do we got? Um, flame on Headman. Okay, Flame on Headman. All right, all right. solid. Um, yep, yep, keep going. Bomberman. Okay, Bomberman, Bomberman 64. I <laughs> all right, well, Mega Man's dead. That's fine. All right, I got you. Okay. What we got next? Uh, I'm going to go with Iceman. Okay. Uh, Gutsman. All right. We've got Triangle Man. Okay, Triangle Man. Solid. I appreciate it. We've got Proto Man. There we go. All right. All right. And what's this? The most important one. I'll hold this one. It's Hard Hat Man. It's not a hamburger? <laughs> it's certainly not a hamburger. Well, this is a Met. All right. You, you, did, you got, like, most of them right? Flame Man, by the way, is, is not Flame Man. It's Fire Man. Okay. Okay. All right. And Bomber Man is actually Bomb Man. What? This is close enough. Don't worry about it. But anyway, these are cool Mega Man uh, Magnet Perlers. So they actually have magnets on them as well, not just a Perler. Uh, so, you know, if you make a $15 donation uh, between now and, of course, the end of Paper Mario, a thousand year door, uh, you are entered to win these. And once again, thank you very much, Mac85, for graciously contributing to uh, these. So thank you very much. And up next, we have these really cool Nintendo Princess postcards. Heck yeah. Woo! As you can tell, these are princesses. That's right. Indeed. All right, who are the princesses? Or are important? Uh, Princess Toadstool Peach. All right, Peach. All, right. All, right. all right, all right, all right. Um... All right, we're going to move on. Thank All you right. very much. Uh, yeah, the, if you make a donation of $10 or more, you're entered to win these. And uh, Derp Thyme, thank you very much for uh, contributing to these. That's a good name, by the way. Uh, okay, this is right up Worm's wheelhouse. Uh, you know everything there is about this wonderful gaming headset. Go for it. It's a gaming headset. Okay. It's got surround sound. Okay. That's all I know about it. It's okay. great. This awesome headset from Sadie's. This is pretty cool. 7.1 surround sound headset. Uh, a gracious uh, anonymous donor uh, contributed to these. So $15 or more, uh, you are entered to win these. So that's really cool. But we've talked about all these wonderful donations you can win um, until Paper Mario the Thousand Year Door, the end of Paper Mario the Thousand Year Door. But there is one grand prize, and that is our... Spyro-themed Nintendo Switch. That's right. Uh, don't now, let the box fool don't you. Don't let the box fool you. It is a normal Switch box, but inside of it is a really cool, like, custom uh, Spyro-themed design. Um, this is, like, a limited edition, one of a kind, in, uh, you know, in uh, celebrating the release of Spyro Reignited Trilogy. So it's really cool. Um, that is a $50 donation. And it's a cumulative donation that you can make throughout the course of the event which, of course, ends uh, Sunday evening, uh, Pacific time. So $50 in total, uh, you are entered with a chance to win that. And uh, I'm kind of jealous. I wish I could win it, but alas, I'm not eligible because, you know, the whole GDQ employee thing. That's right. But 
that's pretty cool. So, uh, yeah, that's our grand prize. And, uh, you know, before we go, real quick, you know, Worm, you can go ahead and put this down. Right. People don't get to see you on camera. You know, they've seen me on camera every now and then, but they don't see you. So you're one of the hardworking GDQ staff members there is. So what do you do for GDQ, Worm? Uh, I am somebody that does uh, fire putting out her... Uh, I also help with um, the donation tracker, um, which has a long and storied history here at Games Done Quick. That it does. Um, and yeah, just uh, basically um, I'm running around on call. Uh, if you see me on camera, uh, probably something is going wrong. It's uh, not probably, it's yes. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah, I do my best not to show up on camera unless uh, a segment like this appears. Hey, there we go. Uh, and, uh, See, sometimes we have to put you on camera when everything's working fine. Is everything working fine? Well, scent isn't, so. That's right. That's right. All right. Well, once again, uh, yeah, I uh, hope you please uh, continue to contribute to the, um, to the cause, uh, which we're raising money for Able Gamers. It's been a great event so far. And if you need any information on any of the prizes you can uh, contribute and try, uh, try to win, you can just go to gamesdonequick.com slash donate for all the information you need. But that is going to do it for us once again. Darkman78, my wonderful uh, compadre worm. worm. That's right. And uh, that's going to do it for us. So we're going to throw it back to the host. All right, thanks, Darkman and Worm. Um, I also want to give a shout-out to Fireputter Outer Worm, because uh, he did replace, actually, our monitor here at the host station yesterday. Old one was having some issues, um, and new one has not caught fire, so great job, Worm. And while we get set up for our Sekiro bonus run, I will get to a few of your donations. We have $20 from Snack Pack. My girlfriend and I love watching GDQ, and the Bloodborne run was amazing, Hattie. Here's $20 to helping disabled gamers enjoy the games we all love and cherish. We have $50 from TechWolf224. Shouts to the bonkers Soulsborne community I've met here at TwitchCon. We have an anonymous $75 donation. Great to see GDQ back. Shout out to the announcers, organizers, and of course the runners for making this event possible. We have $50 from Eat Sleep Ace. Long time watcher, first time donating. Keep up the good work everyone. We also have $50 from Eric80. I always love watching this and donating. Thank you, runners, for a great event. Games Done Quick is sponsored by the Yeti. The Yeti has been supporting Games Done Quick events since 2012. They are the official t-shirt sponsor for Games Done Quick. You can get official GDQ XTs and more at theyeti.com. And checking in on those upcoming bid incentives, we are still a bit over 1,600 for recruiting Jabble. Um, it's going it's to touch, but still, we're quite a bit short on that. Um, Katamari Damacy has gone up a little bit too, but again, we're at about 750 for rolling up the entire world. Then we have our Tony Hawk Pro Skater Choice. Ollie the Magic Bum is still very much in the lead, uh, but it seems Tony Hawk Classic has pulled ahead of Tony Hawk. Classic is at $20 and Tony Hawk is at $10. We also have a couple bid wars for games that will be taking place tomorrow. So you guys have quite a while to get your decisions in and maybe make one of these pull ahead. We've got our Mizawa character choice. 
with the giant panda in the lead at $21. For our Resident Evil 2 run, we have the soundtrack choice, which has the remake OST at $15, and the costume choice, which has Noir in the lead at $85, with Arclay Sheriff at $20. Again, we have quite a while for, until those runs. I would like to mention that all of your donations go directly towards our charity, Able Gamers. You can see there in the bottom corner. There are millions of people with disabilities who can't play video games without expensive, specialized equipment. The Able Gamers charity helps gamers with disabilities by providing that equipment free of charge. Their mission is to create opportunities that enable play in order to combat social isola isolation, foster inclusive communities, and improve the quality of life for people with disabilities. Combat social isolation. I have read this book like three times, and I think I've messed up that part every single time. Oh dear. Anyway, that's what Able Gamers does. Now, as you all can see, we have our Sekiro bonus run coming right up next. Then we have Paper Mario the Thousand Year Door by Yoshizilla. That's going to be a four hour run, which will take us very far into tomorrow, where we have Katamari Damacy by Mr. Shasta, Nights into Dreams HD by Imaginary Inc. Incorporated, and then after that, we have Spark the Electric Jester 2 by Funk Master Dre. Games Done Quick Express 2019 is powered by Twitch. For those of you attending TwitchCon this weekend, visit us up here in room 6D on the second floor next to Twitch Rivals. Our marathon space will be open to spectators 24 hours, including right now, overnight, throughout TwitchCon weekend. Of course, I am somewhat sad to announce that we are fairly close to heading into our last day here at GDQX. Um, this does only go until Sunday, as those of you who saw the pre-show noticed. Uh, but I, I certainly hope you guys are all having fun here at GDQX. Of course, I'm looking over there, and I can see Worm putting out some fires. So again, shout out to Worm, our firefighter here at GDQ. It looks like both Paper Mario Thousand Year Door and Katamari Damacy have gone up. We passed $800 on rolling up the world, and we passed $1,700 on recruiting that cute bunny. We also do have plenty more donation incentives after that. We have the bonus game Tetris 99 Battle Royale, which can replace our bonus game 4 slot tomorrow. But that is only if we manage to reach the donation amount of 999999. That is $9,999.99. We are at $585 for that. Then we also have our Super Mario 64 randomizer upgrade. Currently, that category is at 70 stars, but you can upgrade that category to 120 stars. 
Of course, we do have a very big donation amount on that, $25,000. We have only raised $150 for that. So, if you guys want GDQX to last a little bit longer, you know, we do have both that bonus game as well as that Super Mario 64 randomizer upgrade. And while we are speedrunning those additional 50 stars, I'm sure they take some time. So yeah, make GDQX longer. It's great. It's fun. We have $50 from Brian83. Here is money. Money is good. We have an anonymous $50 donation. Loki just want the Spyro switch. That, that certainly does sound like a nice Spyro switch, but it, it was in the box. Um, I'm not super confident in Darkman and Worm's character identification skills, but you know, we, we, can, we can trust GDQ in general, that's a Spyro switch. And if you are interested in seeing photos of some of our prizes, we do periodically post those on Twitter, as well as our donation tracker. So if you are interested, you can check that out. You can also check out our slideshow here on our GDQX layout. Look at that CMC stone jewelry. It looks real nice. Shout out to our photography crew also. We have $25 from the Sound Defense. Donating to get that great perler of Triangle Man, who, as we all know, hates Particle Man. We have five dollars from Half Dead 239. Hey, keep up the good work. Great Bloodborne run. Ooh. -woo. We have $50 from Skeeter. Shout out to all involved, especially the behind the scenes crew. We have $5 from LE208. What a GDQ on a week when I actually have my check and I can get an incentive for one of my favorite games of all time. Katamari, the excitement is real.